Welcome back everybody. Um, our next talk is going to be given by Siegfried von Miller, who is a postdoc currently at the Fields Institute program, as you can see daily. Um, and he's going to talk to us today on parameterizations and complexity of preparation. Please. Okay, thank you for the introduction and to be given the opportunity to speak here about um, questions that I'm currently trying to answer. So I'll just present them to you uh, with as few as possible details since I have I haven't got so much time. So the first part of the talk will be about Wilkie's conjecture, as um, Garrett has mentioned this morning. Essentially, I'm going to continue where he stopped uh, and parameterization. So, um, okay, let me start with the Pillar-Wilkie theorem. So I think it's exactly in the same form as Garrett has uh, presented it to you this morning. So what we try to do is if you have uh, some definable sets in a nominal structure of R, um, you throw away all uh, infinite semi-algebraic sets contained in X, and then it's, what remains is called the transcendental part on X, of X. And we try to count rational points on it. And so the theorem says, um, well, it gives an upper bound on this, this, this amount of rational points. And then you have a, a sharper version of it in the particular case that X is definable in the minimal structure Rx. And then the upper bound improves to uh, polynomial in this log H. So H is the upper bound on the enumerator and denominator or the height, the height of the rational point if you want. And so what Garrett has explained to you is that in the proof of say the theorem, you need a parameterization theorem, a very delicate one maybe. I uh, will make this more precise in a minute. Uh, and also for the second one, if you try to apply the same strategy, you even need um, a, a more precise uh, parameterization theorem. And so I, the first part of the talk will be trying to make this clear, give some details about the proof of this theorem uh, and why this uh, very delicate parameterization theorem then arises without giving too much details, hopefully, so that the course is still uh, very interesting. Okay, so the proof of the Pillar-Wilkie theorem very shortly goes by induction on the dimension of this set. So the base case is uh, basically by definition by O-minimality. And then the main ingredient is uh, the determinant method. So what it does is we look at um, well, the set of rational points of height at most h, and we try to find few algebraic hypersurfaces so that every of these rational points are at least on one of these hypersurfaces. Um, and so in advance, we pick some degree d of these hypersurfaces that we want, uh, and then you want to um, investigate how many hypersurfaces do you uh, need to do this. Um, and so it turns out that if you fix D, then of course this number will depend on H. Uh, and Gal has already uh, pointed out on Wednesday that in general, you would like to do something different. And I'll also explain this in a minute. But okay, suppose you have done this step. So uh, all my rational points on, on the set are, uh, they lie on such a hypersurface and you don't need um, too many of them. So not too many, is of the same order as in the, the upper bound that you try to prove. And then well, the proof goes by induction. So the claim is that you only have to consider these intersections um, where the dimension drops. So in general, that doesn't have to be the case, um, but you will see probably in Garrett's course that this is sufficient. So I cannot give, uh, will not give more details. So you look at these intersections um, and, and the fact that you, well, you see here, that you are, might get into trouble because you started one set and now um, to apply induction, you are, have already ended up with um, CH to the power epsilon uh, sets. Okay, so what is this determinant method? So this is a more precise statement of what it is. So it was developed by uh, Bombiri and Pila uh, a while ago. So the input is a lot of uh, combinatorial data, let's say, so you have uh, natural numbers m and n, you should interpret these as uh, m is the dimension of x, n is the space, the, the dimension of the space where it lives, and d is the degree of the hypersurfaces that you want to, uh, to use. So it's, uh, let's say, all fixed in advance. And then the, the proposition, it gives you some constant r, 
an epsilon and a C with some properties. So what is a property? Um, you suppose to, you are given a, a map that is sufficiently smooth. Um, so sufficient means it's governed by this constant R and all of its derivatives have to be bounded, have to be bounded by one. And so then you can indeed um, find hypersurfaces HI of the desired quantity um, and such that each rational point that is on X lies at least on, a, on one of these hypersurfaces. And uh, of course, the, the point of this um, proposition is that uh, if, if these, if you let the degree grow of these hypersurfaces, then of course, such a hypersurface uh, can contain more rational points. It has, uh, uh, let's say, a number of points determines the hypersurface. So if you take more points, you need a hypersurface of a higher degree. Let's say that's the, the idea. And so the point is, if you take d large, then this epsilon becomes arbitrary small, just like um, you want in the pillar wilkie theorem. So then I'd like to do a small demonstration of how this proof maybe works or a picture that you can have in mind. So I've already drawn the, the, the first part of the statement that this, you have to suppose that X is the image of a sufficiently smooth map. So this is what I've given you here. So we consider the image of a sufficiently smooth map and let's say, we have a few rational points on it of height at most h. So in the beginning, if h is low, there are very few points. And then the idea of the, of the construction of the proof of this proposition is that you take a smaller box contained in the domain, uh, let's say b, and then of course we can consider its image. And at this moment uh, on this image, there aren't so many rational points of height h. So uh, it's very easy then to, if you have fixed some degree d for your hypersurface to find a solution, uh, a hypersurface that contains this point. Now, of course, if, if you let h grow, then you'll find more and more rational points uh, and also in this image of this box. And so if your degree d is fixed, you will see that after a while, you will not be able um, to solve the system of equations that says, yeah, I want this, this blue curve of the hypersurface to contain all of these yellow points in the red circle. So what is then the, the calculation made in this proposition is, well, I want to keep the same degree, which uh, Gal already pointed out on Wednesday, that this is uh, specific to the setting. If you want to take the same degree, well, then you have to uh, make this, this box smaller. So you, you consider a smaller box in here, of course, then it just picks out very few rational points again, and you will be able to catch them with one uh, hypersurface of the degree D again. And of course, you could also uh, do something else. Suppose I don't want to shrink my box. Of course, I can just increase the degree of my hypersurface, which will maybe allow me to catch more of these rational points, all of them on the image of this box. And so then you get, uh, a different statement that is this statement, but it's the same proof, um, the same method. And I have um, here put a version that you can find in a recent paper by Tulaka Spila and Wilkie. So um, it's the same statement, but in, in, in advance you decide I'm going to pick D, a polynomial in log H. So you see this all the way on the bottom. So this is polynomial in log H if you want. Um, so D is now fixed. Um, or I'll fix it very with H. And, and the outcome in that case is that R um, is polynomial in D, so log H in this case, but um, the number of algebraic hypersurfaces now remains constant. Okay, so um, this is exactly what you want if you want to uh, prove Wilkie's conjecture where you have this polynomial in log H bound. But you see that, um, that R is now polynomial log H. So that is a very important thing to keep in mind. Okay, so let's uh, go through the proof, which was by induction. Um, so then we want to apply this determinant method, but the first point that it says is if X is the image of such a sufficiently smooth map. So how do you achieve this in general? So then you get this York parameterization theorem for all structures that Garrett has already mentioned um, earlier today. 
Um, and so this is actually the main content of the Pila Wilkie paper that they prove that in any ominimal structure, um, the defined well set X can be uh, parameterized by um, sufficiently smooth maps, CR, with uh, bounded derivatives. Okay, so that's great. Then you do the determinant method on each of these images. But then um, I claim that you have to intersect with finitely many of these hypersurfaces. Um, but then, and then you apply your parameterization theorem again. Um, but then you run into trouble because the um, equation that determines your hypersurface is going to depend on h uh, because it has to catch rational points up to height h. And so this uh, number of maps may depend on uh, h. So you have to resolve this. And the solution is to prove that um, if you have a family of sets that varies with some uh, parameters, and in this case, the parameters would be um, would, would tell you the, the, the coefficients of the hypersurface you are intersecting with. And you just prove that there is some amount of maps that does not depend on these parameters uh, that does the job. And so uh, stated differently, you want to prove that it's uniform among families of sets. And so um, this is um, also a, a very difficult part in this uh, Pilar Wilkie paper. Okay, so now, this is the proof of the Pilar Wilkie theorem very briefly. And so let's try to prove uh, this conjecture using this method. Of course, it's still a conjecture, so it's not going to work. Um, okay, so we apply a parameterization theorem. Uh, that's good. But then uh, in this case, if you use the determinant method, I said R now is a polynomial in log H. And so I have parameterized my set X. Um, I use a CR parameterization. But you can expect that if you parameterize your set um, up to, well, and the maps have to be smooth up to order R, then this amount of maps, which is constant, that is going to depend, of course, on R. So to speak, in O minimality, we prove stuff by induction. Um, and you get, uh, it increases with every step. That's what, what I want to say. So it a priori definitely depends on R. And so if R is polynomial log H, you better get, um, uh, you want a good dependence of this number of maps on R. And so um, this number N is totally not explicit in the, the Pila-Wilkie theorem or in the, the paper of Pila and Wilkie because they use very uh, not explicit methods to, uh, to achieve this uniformness. So what do you want to do is you want to prove a more delicate CR parameterization theorem where this number of maps depends polynomially on R and then, um, the method will go through. So you apply this determinant method um, and then you get a polynomial in many in log H intersections of degree polynomial in log H. Um, and then you want to parameterize again. And then again, you run into a, a problem because we have made the number of maps uniform among all coefficients of a hyperservice of degree D. But so it still depends on this parameter space, which was uh, hypersurfaces of degree at most d. So it depends on d. And in this uh, second method, we have picked d to be polynomial in h. So this could also depend on h. So to summarize this, you also have to prove that your number of maps is going to be a polynomial in d. Um, so that's, you need uh, two uh, parameters. It should be more explicit in, in the amount of maps in your CR parameterization theorem, namely it should be polynomial in the degree D of these hypersurfaces and it should be polynomial in R. And so this was uh, actually already known by Pila for a while. So let me put here a conjecture that he has made. Um, and then he, he proves that this conjecture basically implies Wilkie's conjecture, but it's also still open. So what, what is, well, it's basically a summary of what I just said. So if you take a set X defined by Rx, you intersect it with um, an algebraic hypersurfaces of degree H, then you can uh, parameterize the intersection um, uh, with the amount of charge that is polynomially in D and R. And this polynomial in, in statement here should be more clear, um, is universal among all these uh, hypersurfaces H of degree uh, among D. And so the original statement may be more known to uh, people in the audience. I've just rephrased it in CR terms. But the original statement is that the intersection 
is mild. So, and then it depends on three parameters. I'll try to explain what, what they mean. So um, the first parameter, this E1 d to the power C2, actually says that uh, the amount of maps has to be, a, uh, the amount of charts is polynomial in D. So I've explained this before. Um, oh, and the property that the set is mild means that it has a mild parametrization. So what is this? A mild parametrization, instead of using CR maps, use smooth maps, uh, and you put a bound on their derivatives that I put there. And then the, the C3, D to the power C4, so also polynomial in D, then corresponds to, you want this A to be, uh, to be polynomial in D. So the, the A relates to this second parameter there. Uh, and then, of course, the C5 actually relates to the C in my upper bound. Okay, um, so this eliminates the use of uh, CR parametrizations. Basically, if you have a mild parametrization, they are smooth and you have this upper bound for each R, so um, there is no dependence on R anymore. So that's convenient, but it turns out, I will not discuss this now, but uh, having a mild parametrization is a very strong property. So in general, this is uh, hard to achieve. Okay, so let me discuss some recent results in this direction. So uh, Pinyamini and Novikov have recently proved such a result. Um, so for sub-analytic sets, has already been pointed out that actually you can achieve polynomial dependence in R. Uh, and also they prove that if X is semi-algebraic, you also achieve uh, polynomial in D. Um, where I'm now cheating a little bit with, with the term D, I'm sorry for that. And so they also have a mild parametrization version. And um, another paper, which roughly has the same result, so by Klucker, Spila, and Wilkie, they, they uh, prove these results for power sub-analytic sets, it's a slightly larger class, and it's also polynomial in R. Um, and I've recently improved this um, results and basically show that you can also achieve uh, C2 is equal to the dimension of X. And that they also actually have a mild parametrization version, but they don't have uh, this information in the semi-algebraic case. And so, uh, well, since I'm, very familiar with the second uh, result, part of my PhD thesis, I'll further discuss how to hopefully, or what to do to get this extra information in that case. So that will be the second part, maybe I'll drink in other questions. No, okay, so I'll go on. So I'll try to sketch very briefly what is required to prove this CR parametrization theorem of Klucker, Spila, and Wilkie. So the first step is an ingredient that Garrett has discussed. So you use cell decomposition to your set X. And then the second step, well, a cell is the same as a map from uh, zero one to the dimension of that set to, uh, or that should not be, should it be X? Um, no, that should not be, oh well, yeah, it should be X. Uh, and so then the second step is you improve this map. Um, improve means you bound to C1 norm uh, and you reduce to a nice form. So bounding C1 norm is something we have seen on Wednesday because then you can play a game with um, reparam reparametrizing your domain. Uh, in this case, you use this power map, uh, X maps to X to the power R, and this will bound immediately all derivatives up to order R. And so then I claim in order to, um, then your derivatives depend on R, but you can kill it if you uh, subdivide your cube into smaller pieces and reparametrize in that way. And so you see, you need R to the dimension X many smaller cubes. And this is exactly what I've claimed before that you can do it, uh, that, that this is the dependence on R. So, but that doesn't say so much about the dependence on D. Um, so I'm going to skip the example, but you can, maybe you have thought about it already. So what is this, how to reduce to this nice form? I want to briefly um, mention that. So they use a preparation theorem. A preparation theorem, what does it do? So you're given some globally subparametric function. We have a result by Lyon and Rollin that you can uh, prepare it. So that means that you can uh, write it in a, nice form. So to be more precise, you can decompose in the sense that Carrot has discussed um, Rn plus one into finitely many cylinders so that either, well, your cylinder could be given by an equation Y is a function in X. So then you just um, substitute this in your uh, 
function f and it, it only depends on x, or if it's actually an open cylinder, so open in a topological sense, you can rewrite it in a, in a specific form. And you see, for instance, that if this uh, function theta is zero, then you have essentially made it monomial in y. And so the proof goes on by induction and you achieve that f is a monomial times a unit. And this is very useful. Now, this is a nice form I was talking to. In fact, in their paper, they use a more uh, precise version of this statement. So very briefly for people that know, so globally subanalytic is the same as definable in Rn. And in uh, the PhD thesis of Daniel Miller, he investigates um, some other classes that let's say are closed under this operation of preparation. And so actually the result of Klocker's Pilar and Wilkie holds with respect to this structure. So maps will be definable in that structure. Um, and so yeah, I've put some examples of these classes. There are also classes of, of analytic functions. And so you get ominimal structures RW. That's where the result uh, actually holds. And so the main ingredient also mentioned before in this, in this uh, workshop is the, the singularization algorithm in uh, a whole last Spicer Wilkie paper of quasi analytic uh, minimal structures. So, okay, if you want to prove this uh, parameterization theorem where you get polynomial dependence on D, uh, we have to work more. So you don't get it for free by O minimality. So the first questions you have to answer is, well, my first step in the proof was, use a decomposition theorem. So um, um, how, many, um, how much cylinders does this produce or how many cells does this produce? So you need to know this, keep track of this. Um, so then immediately what comes in mind, hopefully is Pafi and sets because we have their results by Kowalski or as mentioned on Wednesday, um, the sharply O minimal structures, they have uh, extra information that keeps track of such information. And so well, I would like to know, I don't know, are there interesting classes W that are contained in this, uh, or no, in this Fafian uh, world? And then the second question you need to know is this desingularization algorithm. What it does is locally around a point, it gives you finitely many cylinders where this particular form holds, this preparation theorem holds. And so the question is how many cylinders does this produce? Uh, so, okay, I'm not going to say much more about that because I'm already running out of time. Uh, so these are the fundamental problems one has to solve. Then I think yeah, I'm going to skip the example. I'm sorry for that. So the goal was um, to show that this intersection is mild. So if you could answer these two main problems, so the cell decomposition problem and um, the desingularization complexity problem, then you can establish that this amount of map C1, well, the first parameter in this mildness is, is uh, as desired. And then you still have to check the second one, which follows from the construction of the proof, uh, uh, used in the proof of Klockers, Pilar, and Wilkie. Um, but so I'm very familiar with that. I think this is uh, okay, given that, uh, that it works. So I, I'm pretty confident that you get this for free if you just do the computation. Okay, and then I'm going to stop. Thank you very much for your attention.